so uh, let me answer this uh, uh, next. This and the next two questions. Uh, I haven't done these questions in the past because they are kind of reading check questions. But um, I have the time and I want to just finish everything. So <laughs> let me do them. Um, so it says, as the width of the slit producing a single slit diffraction pattern is reduced, how will the diffraction pattern produce the change? Ah, so. Let me give you an answer that is based on formula. So in your textbook, you will find this formula for the destructive or um, let, me, let me call it uh, diffraction minima. So you'll find this formula, diffraction minima for um, single slit diffraction. And you can certainly answer this based on this formula. And the formula is the uh, the aperture times sine theta theta being um, you know defined as like if that's the single slit that's the screen and you are looking at this spot here then theta is defined this way when this quantity um, is equal to any of these possible values on the right hand and an integer one and on also a whole number times lambda. Uh, where n is equal to 1, 2, and so on, then you get um, a uh, double <laughs> single slit diffraction minima. So by looking at this formula, you can kind of um, do this uh, quick uh, conceptual-ish analysis. The right-hand side is constant. It doesn't change. For a given n, it would be constant. So on the left-hand side, whenever one of the two quantities change, the other quantity has to change to match. So where it says the, the width of the slit is reduced. So if uh, the aperture size is going down, then, well, theta must get larger for the given n to kind of compensate, keep this product constant. And if uh, this uh, theta giving the the diffraction minima is getting larger. That means whatever kind of the shape of the pattern you saw, it's getting wider. So you could answer it that way. Diffraction pattern becomes broader. And it'll be right answer, you know, nothing wrong with it. And I just wanted to highlight this to say, uh, this is a setup that I'd like to return when we talk about quantum mechanics and wave nature of matter and how this ties into something called uncertainty principle. I remember this was when I was an undergraduate student, uh, physics major, and when I felt like I understood the quantum mechanics at an intuitive level was when I could arrive at this answer without having gone through this formula, but through uncertainty principle instead. So let me just leave that as a, I don't know, cliff, not a cliffhanger, a foreshadowing for when we do quantum mechanics in about a month and a half. So. Let me go to the next question. A uh, rectangular slit is twice as wide as it is high. Is the central diffraction peak wider in the vertical direction or in the horizontal direction? I see. So uh, let me just draw it to make sure I have this uh, picture in mind. Um, twice as wide as it is high. So it's wider than it is high, something like this. That's the, um, that's the shape of the slit. So it's obscured around that. And like it, I, I'm looking at the slit head on. Okay, now if you have um, internalized the intuition that I was describing earlier, then you would be able to get to this sensor without looking at any math. <laughs> Let's check if I've internalized that um, that uh, concept. Uh, and you know, uh, the way to do it would be you can, um, even though when it's two dimensional, it can get a little bit complicated. But you can say, all right, to the like a uh, zero order for the very rough approximation, I can just apply this in one dimension at a time. So you say, okay, so in the horizontal direction, I have an aperture that is larger, and in the vertical direction, I have this aperture that is smaller. So you think through, okay, uh, it, with a larger aperture, uh, theta for a given n can be smaller, so narrower pattern. When the aperture is smaller, then the opposite, theta, uh, broader pattern. And reading the choices, it looks like this. 
So you can definitely do that. Um, uh, the when you know that you are building up this kind of intuition is when you can answer immediately and correctly while answering immediately. I mean, the way I would describe physical intuition really is to know the right answer without having to do any calculation. Uh, that's and it comes from experience. It comes from uh, practice. Okay, last uh, reading check question. Where I'm so uh, strangely writing down equations. Uh, all right, shown below is the central part of the interference pattern project into, into the double slit. Yes, actually a combination of a single slit diffraction and double slit interference. I think uh, your textbook calls it double slit diffraction, which I think it, that's fine. That's a good name. Um, note that the bright spots are evenly spaced. Yeah, is this a single or a double slit characteristic? It is a double slit characteristic. Um, it's uh, I guess you can get at it uh, from two different ways. So I've written down the diffraction minima for single slit diffraction and the expression for the interference maxima for double slit interference is given by this. Um, slit separation D times sine theta defined the same way as above is equal to some integer m times lambda, and here m can actually be zero, or plus minus one, plus minus two, and so on. And don't be confused by the fact that I'm referring to maxima here, and I've referred to minima here. <laughs> the, the formulas look so similar, but the principle in, under which they are derived are, are different. <laughs> so just don't be confused. Don't, don't confuse those two, and don't be confused by them either. Um, so one way in which uh, this formula can help you is if you are visualizing the, the setup of the double slit, then I hope you have a sense that the slit separation D is going to be greater than the aperture size A. D is greater than A. And uh, with the kind of the property of these equations that we are talking about, with a greater um, length parameter, the angular quantity here will be smaller narrower pattern. So it's almost like a multiple choice. You see a kind of the broad pattern and a narrow pattern, which belongs to which. And I would say based on this, the narrower pattern belongs to the, the thing that involves the greater distance there, double slit interference. So that's that. Um, note that some of the bright spots dim on either side of the center, like here and here. You're going to be looking for that next week's lab. Uh, is this a single or a double slit characteristic? I would say that's the single slit uh, minima. Uh, so that's the single slit characteristic. Uh, oh, which is smaller, the slit width or the separation between? I don't think you need to see a picture to know. Like, how could the separation be ever larger than the slit size? Like, that's impossible. Um, so. Um, slit width is smaller. It's like that's the only physically possible arrangement. Uh, in the limit where aperture size is equal to D, that's when you actually have just one slit, or one continuous slit instead of double slit. So, yeah. So those are the answers. And those were the three reading check questions. Uh, I don't ask you all three. They are all uh, one of the, you could get one of those three questions as part of your question three in this set.